So I'm what's called the training liaison for CUNY First. So uh, I will be heading the training activities. Um, uh, I do this because I already do faculty and staff training in technology in general, so I was the one picked for this particular role. So what that means is that um, I help the main CUNY First training team the, um, implement training on the campuses. And so I myself will be doing some training for faculty and staff in general. Uh, but there are also other people who have been trained in particular departments. For example, um, the registrars, admissions, bursars, financial aid. They will be doing their own training and I'm just helping to coordinate that part. So I'll be doing more general training for the college community, for faculty, uh, for advisors. People who don't already fall into one of those specific student service centered areas. You know, the training that we do for faculty is specifically on faculty products like Blackboard and development of online and hybrid courses. But um, me and the other uh, instructional designer, who is Donna Dickinson, we also do a lot of workshops on Office products, you know, all the Microsoft Office products, on um, other topics like uh, using the telephone, using the BMCC portal, Lotus Notes, that kind of thing. And so that reaches out to both faculty and staff. So the faculty, of course, have their own uh, tasks that they'll have to fulfill on CUNY First, which is looking up the classes that they're going to be teaching or are teaching, uh, getting rosters, uh, putting in grades and attendance, and they will be also helping students. As, um, as faculty advisors, they'll be helping students to um, choose courses and maybe to help them enroll in courses. So we'll also be training advisors who do, uh, you know, advisement enrollment. And then everybody else in the college who uh, uses the student information system, whether it's just to look up students for eligibility to vote in student elections, or maybe to um, input or look up students' health uh, and immunization records to help their registration. Um, let me see what other, oh, for people in the disabilities office, Right, need to look up students and also um, their records for to take care of their disability requests. Um, so that kind of uh, college community, uh, we will be helping to train them in how to access the system and how to look up student records and then do those particular tasks that they have to do on CUNY First. What I always say in the workshops is that CUNY First has already been here for two years. So the first smaller module of CUNY First was to do with the business office. That was implemented two years ago. And then one year ago, everybody's HR information was implemented. So there have been previous implementations of CUNY First. It's not a new system, but the part of it that is going to be new and that's coming in November is the big part because that's the student records part. And um, what I understand it is that it will replace CUNY VM for uh, those of us who uh, look up students in classes or create classes or register students for classes and it will also replace Panther for students and it will replace web rosters and web grading so the student information systems part which is called campus solutions that's the code word for it campus solutions will be the one that's the big part that's going to be implemented in November but CUNY First is already um, here. Well, at this point we're helping everybody claim their accounts. So everybody should already be in the CUNY First system and it's simply a matter of accessing your account. And so we're asking everyone to please claim their accounts first to make sure to get out of the way any issues that may arise with having an account and having proper access to the account. Um, come September, we're hoping that there's going to be what they call a sandbox, a demonstration program where people will actually be able to do hands-on training. So. Um, once that is available, then we'll also be offering that sort of hands-on training, and that we would prefer to do in particular groups. So uh, the registrars people will be doing that together, and let's say the people from the Disabilities Office, Office of Accessibility, we hope to get them together so that they'll be um, doing that, um, you know, so that they'll be covering what they need in their own specific workshop. And then there will be specific workshops for faculty and for advisors, et cetera, et cetera. So for specific groups to get some hands-on training and specific training. So if you are faculty and staff, then you are welcome to come and contact either me or Donna Dickinson, because we are the two people who do faculty and staff training. So you can let us know um, by email or by telephone. Um, 
but if also you're in the college, it's actually easiest to just drop by our offices. We're part of the e-learning center. We're not the only staff in the e-learning center. Um, and we have a lab, a small lab for faculty and staff, but our lab staff are also trained in how to claim accounts. So the easiest thing to do is just to drop in, and usually we can help you in a few minutes face to face. Uh, if you're unable to drop in or it's inconvenient, then you can contact me or Donna by phone or by email, and we can do some troubleshooting. Okay, so claiming the account is actually a pretty straightforward process, but there's a few tips and tricks which um, can actually help out. So what I'm doing here is I'm just clicking on the CUNY First link on the BMCC homepage and going to faculty and staff, and you'll see that there's a uh, link here that says go to home.cunyfirst.cuny.edu. Okay, so again, that will bring you here to the login page. Okay, and again, the it's home.cunyfirst.cuny.edu. What you'll want to do, if this is your first time, is you'll click on first time users. Right? Although it says first time users, you can do this multiple times. So if you have done this, let's say, three months ago and you completely forgot everything, you can still click first time users because uh, you already have a record on CUNY First, so you can claim the account and you can claim it as many times as necessary. But anyway, so let me click here on first time users. And what that will do is it will start the account activation process. So let me say a few things about the account activation process. First of all, I have to say that um, it's a little bit finicky. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to be prepared with everything you'll need to do before you get started. Uh, let me explain the process so you know what it is. You'll need to put in your first name and your last name and your date of birth. You must use the format two digits for the month slash two digits for the year slash four digits, um, sorry, month, date, and then four digits for the year. So that's um, including the slashes and then the last four digits of your social security number. If you uh, get an error message saying that the user can't be found, please double check. Make sure that you've put in your first name, last name, capitals, doesn't matter, that you've used the proper format with the slashes for the date of birth and the last four digits. If it still says that your username can't be found, then contact the help desk because maybe there's some discrepancy in the record uh, of what they have listed for your first name or last name or your social. There might be some little typo. After you do this, uh, what you will need to do is um, answer, put in your answers to five security questions. So you'll have a whole list of possible security questions like where was your mother born, who was your first crush, um, what's the name of your pet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can choose five of those and put in your answers to those. Those security questions will be used later if you forget your password to reset your password. Right? So it doesn't matter what you put in there as long as you can remember. If you can say, if you want to say that you were born on the planet Pluto, that's fine, as long as you remember what your answers to that are. And it doesn't matter if they're um, capital letters or not. After you choose your five security questions, then you will choose a password. The password has to be at least eight characters long. It could be longer, but at least eight characters long with at least one uppercase character and at least one number or special character. Okay? You'll be asked to enter that um, password twice, and then you'll click OK. When you click OK, it's kind of a long process, so don't be impatient and click twice because sometimes it gets upset when you keep submitting it. So please be patient after you put in your password and click OK. And if you're successful, it will give you two pieces of information. Those two pieces of information are your username and your EMPL ID, right? So your username is always going to be your first name, dot last name, and then two numbers, OK? So it's not got anything to do with any other, uh, with any other username. It'll be first name, dot, last name, and then two numbers. And then you'll have what's called the EMPL ID, and that's a series of numbers, right? That series of numbers is your ID on the CUNY First system. So it's like the social security number, right? Because we can't use social security numbers anymore. So we're actually going to be assigned an EMPL ID, uh, or also sometimes it's called a CUNY ID. Okay. Will you ever need your EMPL ID? Um, occasionally you may need it, but you don't necessarily need it on a day-to-day -day basis. Because 
on a day-to-day -day basis, when you are logging into CUNY First here, you'll only need to know, you'll only need your username, which is first name, dot, last name, and then two numbers, and then the password that you've chosen. Okay? So your password will have to be changed every 90 days. On the 85th day, you'll get an email reminder that you need to change it. When you change it, you can't change it to any of the last four passwords that you used. Okay? And if you should ever make a change in your password, um, you are blocked from making another change for five days. Okay, so these are sort of security things. Your personnel information. So I strongly encourage you to click on self-service, to browse and see if the information that HR has on you uh, looks right. You know? um, there's some subsections here under self-service. Um, the only ones that we're using right now are personal information and payroll and compensation. Right? So you can browse those two sections. Some of the information you can change and some of it you can't. So um, I strongly encourage you to take a look at your emergency contacts, for example, and either add or modify your emergency contacts just so you have some experience with playing around with the system and you get a feel for it. Some of the other information you can't change. For example, you can't actually change your compensation, fortunately or unfortunately. CUNY first is a program that is shown to you within your browser. So what you want to remember is that when you're taking action in CUNY First, you want to do it within the program. And you don't want to go outside the program into the browser areas. So for example, uh, if you're looking to go backwards in CUNY First, it's not recommended, in fact, it's, it's highly not recommended to click on the back button in the browser because that might have unpredictable results. What you really want to do is you want to work within here. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom of a screen, usually you'll see a button that says cancel, go back, submit, save, some kind of button to take action. Or if you want to move to a different section, you want to go through the navigation here and click on the section that you want. But avoid going up here to the back button. Okay. Um, the other thing is that you'll notice that there's a lot of um, yellow buttons around, and usually those yellow buttons have to do with taking some action to change the data, right? So again, you'll want to work within here. Uh, you'll want to click on usually yellow buttons when you're changing the data. Um, you usually get some sort of symbol he signal here that says processing or saved or successful, um, and avoid going outside to, to this part here. So that's what... Um, the self-service looks like. Again, you can explore personal information, payroll, and compensation. You can look at the other sections, benefits, learning, and development, recruiting activities, but they're not actually being used right now. Okay? I'm going to click on home here. I'm going to click on the, a home to get back onto that main page that I was at. Again, this is not the browser home, right? This is not the home for Internet Explorer Mozilla. This is the home for the CUNY First page. And again, I'm back here where we started. Okay. The second link here, Enterprise Learning Management, is for you to access training courses and materials. Right? And you'll notice that when you click on Enterprise Learning Management, it actually opens up in a new window. Right? Um, for this window, um, as I said, this is where training materials uh, will be accessible. And we'll give you more details on that depending on the kind of materials you need. I'm going to close that window. And the third link, which says HR Campus Solutions, is the actual CUNY First uh, system, right? So it's called HR slash Campus Solutions because the HR part has already been working, um, and it's been working for a year. And the other part, Campus Solutions, is what is going to be available come November. So once again, oops. If I click on that, again, it opens up in a new window. Right? And um, there isn't much to show you right now because this is only HR stuff, right? If you are a manager, if you click on manager self-service, you would see uh, the people who report to you. Um, and then once Campus Solutions, which is the student information system, is up, there will be many more choices here, or I don't know if many more. There will be some more choices here for you to access that um, system. So you'll see things like um, Faculty Center, Advisor Center, Student Center, um, Campus Community, et cetera, et cetera. Um, course, let me see, curriculum management, records and enrollment, and things like that. All right, and that's what you'll be seeing and using for um, CUNY First Campus Solutions when it comes up. And that's pretty much what we cover in our workshops.
right? And so we do the demonstration and a little view of CUNY first. <laughs> 